Hello viewers, welcome to my Doctor Who themed YouTube channel, Who Ventures, and this is my um, Space Report 5 of Time Lord Victorious, and this is the book um, The Night, The Fool and the Dead by Steve Cole. Now this is the book that has got me really pumped up for, to follow this story at first. I was like coach for deciding lifespans it's a bit dark for me but this it's like turned it into a bond sort of a bond movie and Steve Cole does write um, young James Bond so you can tell he does because this is amazing and it actually got me really excited and less um, sort of apprehensive about this story and it's especially I love Brian so the story is that the doctor's gone all the way back to the dark times which is only a fairy tale for him and he's um, come to this planet with the Andalians and the story is that there's a, um, a salesperson and their demonstrator and they're demonstrating their shield this life shield and it can shield you from the coachway and their plan to, um, to to decide people's lifespans and what the coach would do. And, and the, if you haven't read this, you should go read it first because I'm going to spoilerise it. But it's um, they trying, they're selling these suits, but it's sort of a, it's a big con because. They're trying to sell the suits and they um, they don't actually do anything. The person who's demonstrating the suits, their body is their bo their body is what is the defence mechanism, not the suits. So this they sell these suits, the Andalians, but the coach will get there first, the Andalians they they die and then they can get the suits back and do a next demonstration. And so this is what the doctors sort of at first the doctors figuring out like about these suits in this demonstration, and then because the then um, the doctor he meets up with Brian, and then that's when it turns into a bit of a Bond film, and Brian is like is awesome and he's got a suit on and his interaction with Ten is amazing because he's like oh yes he calls Ten Admiral yes Admiral and he's like eh, I guess he's sort of like the Bond girl but the Bond girl who is like has all the plans as well and it's like a bit of it's quite frisson a frisson I can't say that word a frisson of sexiness between Brian and the Doctor that might just be in my head but it's amazing because Brian talks to his, uh, his communicator and he calls him Mr Ball <laughs> it's funny it says Mr Ball says this and then so Brian is sort of like the Bond person and then there's this creature this guy and he sort of hired Brian out to be an assassin so Brian is sort of a James Bond but then Tan comes along and he starts being the main James Bond so they have Brian and, and then as they go along they defeat things and they find things and then eventually the doctors he's fighting the coach here and trying to rescue people and he realises that if they reverse they have reverse engineer what the coater are doing they can he can put it back on the coater and the coater is like in um, what they do will reflect back onto the coater and the doctor is realising I'm gonna manage if I do this I can 
have the I have the power and he realized he'd have the power over life and lifespan and he could bring because a lot of it is about his heartbreak over losing Rose and he's realizing that if he controls the lifespan him and Rose could have been happily together because he could control everything and he can save and there's all the trauma from Adelaide Brooks' suicide and then he realises he starts getting really too big for his boots and realises he can control the lifespan because he's like I've defeated the coterists and then he's like controlling life so he gets a bit Victor Frankenstein at the end of the book and he puts his Time Lord robes on so he's getting a bit of a pompous twat and and he's got Brian who's sort of sucking up to him as not helping him to not bringing him back down to earth really so that's pumping up his ass. it's like ah. and then there's a, a Grimm's fairy tale that runs through the book um, as the moral of the story and we see um, nine telling this fairy tale to Rose and then we also see eight and eight somehow with Brian in a different time period and he's talking about this grim fairy tale too and then at the end of the book nine and um, eight um, they turn up and said try to persuade the ten ten Doctor and the ten doctors like, no, I have the power. <laughs> and they're like, calm it down, mate. Calm me church, love. Calm me church, love. Calm it down. Come on now. Calm it down. And but Tan's like, no. So there's one scene in this book that I, I really want to draw. I think I'm going to draw because it was quite sexy with Brian. Brian basically straddles the tenth doctor <laughs> and like wipes his face fronts all over his face so he's basically stuck in the tenth doctor. I love that. Love that. So I love the dynamic between Ten and Brian, even though Ten has been a dickhead. I I just love it and I love the pacing. The pacing gets in more Bond movie-ish as you go along into the book and I just re really enjoyed it and made me really excited to to continue with the Time Lord Victoria story and oh, it's, so this is an excellent book I really enjoyed it it's very good writing I love Brian I just, I, I just love it so yay Brilliant. I love it. So I will be continuing to look at all the Time Lord Victorious things and making notes for reviews and stuff. Um, so yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Yay!